And good afternoon. Welcome into Market Talk on this Thursday, April 7th. Great to have you with us once again. I'm your host, Jesse Allen, and thank you for joining us and making us part of your day to get all the uh, market information you need for your operation. Find us online, markettalkag.com. That's our home on the web, markettalkag.com. All of our social media links are there, all of our streaming sources, the latest news of agriculture, and much more. It's all online at markettalkag.com. Well, as we take a look at the market trade today, we have uh, had a fairly decent day in soybeans and bean oil. One quarter of wheat were mixed to lower in the wheat market as we prepare for tomorrow's USDA April WASDE numbers. We have plenty to discuss. Let's bring in our good friend, Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor with Total Farm Marketing. Brian, good afternoon, sir. And, uh, you know, we look at the trade today, we get ready to wrap up a week, but we're going to have a uh, busy Friday with uh, those April WASD numbers coming up. Yeah, it just seemed like we had the acreage and stocks report, and bing, here we are already to another report. USDA supply and demand report due out tomorrow. Uh, typically not a huge mover, but this year, again, you've got so many unknown variables. How is the USDA going to factor in Ukraine? What does the crop look like in South America? Is, uh, are we still uh, driving the the Brazilian bean crop uh, lower or, or will the numbers come in lower? Private forecasts are considered lower. We saw today where Conab uh, lowered very slightly the, the bean production estimate, but still uh, a slide in the favorable category. A lot of rumors say that China is back in the market buying beans for new crop, and that seemed to give the bean market, or at least that's why we think the bean market was uh, doing what it's doing today. and almost looked like the traders were willing to buy beans and sell wheat today. Yeah, I was going to ask, was it more the, the CONAB number being down slightly that was a positive support for beans or or those China rumors that uh, you're mentioning here? Or was it a combination of both? Well, maybe a combination of both, but likely the China numbers. That that CONAB number was, was I don't know, two-tenths or three-tenths of, of a million metric tons. So it wasn't really anything significant. I would, I would just term that neutral. Now, if somebody out there was really thinking that, that you know, the tide was going to turn on that number perhaps then you would say that but i i think it was more the the idea that the um bean market had two good closes until yesterday then a down and then back up today so you got some technical buying i think end users are finding they got good value in beans after the pullback after the stocks and acreage report and in particular china so we saw an announced sale yesterday and then again, a lot of rumors today that they may have purchased up to five cargoes of beans. We don't have that confirmed yet, but that's what we've heard. Well, I know as well in the soy complex today, Brian, soybean oil was fairly strong, even with the uh, drop again in crude oil. Uh, what are your thoughts with the strength in soybean oil today? Well, soybean oil has been kind of pulled in two different directions. You've not only got soybean oil giving the market some kind of, or uh, uh, palm oil giving the market some kind of correction and that was that was down last night it's been so palm oil on the one hand and then you've got uh, crude oil on the other but it seemed to actually find its own merit strength today i don't know if traders were just you know moving out of some of the long meal that they recently purchased and, and selling oil but or buying oil but uh, oil had some good strength to it too and you know we continue to see big picture long term ideas of tight world vegetable oil supplies and until those are really replenished there'll be a lot of back and forth charts look like they may have peaked in oil uh you've got a actually a start of a downtrend which means the market peaked dropped off rallied back that's a lower high dropped back a lower low last week and so really the the, the soybean oil market you might argue maybe peaked in early early march um the bottom line is there's really not any kind of big weather event after you get past about the first or second week of March, uh, unless something happens in the Southern hemisphere. So you, you just, you're kind of drifting, but it hasn't drifted down much. And that's, that's the good news. If you're bullish, the bean complex is an oil is still your leader. I know corn up a little bit today really wasn't a whole lot of news out there outside of some of those rumors and the CONAB numbers. Now on the Brazilian crop from CONAB, they raised their core production 3.2 million metric tons. Do you think that was a, a weight on the corn market a little bit today, even though we did finish up slightly? I, I think it was because it's it's early in the season to be cranking the size up already to, to me. I, I would have thought next month is where if, if we continue to see what appears to be conducive weather that you you would increase the size of the crop i never quite understood that out of brazil unless they come up with a 
come out with a kind of a low or a low expectation for crop because it seems like it's very easy to raise the production as long as you have something that's close to normal weather. So I, I really don't know if the reporting agencies sort of factor in more of a volatile production season than maybe the U.S. U.S., it's kind of like clockwork. We have this trend line and it seems like the USDA throws some numbers out at top end. And then the last couple of years, they've been backpedaling from that. But, uh, uh, it, it, and the same thing did happen in Argentina or and Brazilian corn production last year where, where it just got dry and the, the corn numbers came you know, significantly lower than first started. But in most years, we just see the corn production number up month after month. They start out, it seems like, with a, a less than high number. I'm diving a little more into the wheat market. You know, we kind of slid late at the close, a little more maybe profit taking there in Chicago, Kansas City wheat. We had that poor initial crop rating earlier this week. I, I mean, you know, but then we come in here ahead of the reports. You know, we're still watching the fighting with Russia, Ukraine, a lot of that shifting to the eastern edge of Ukraine. Uh, but then seeing a bit of, you know, maybe profit taking here today. What's your thoughts with this wheat market heading into tomorrow's WASDE report? I, I think if you're bullish, you're a little disappointed in the way the market traded today. I don't think you're looking for anything bearish to come out of the report tomorrow. Crop ratings are terrible in the U.S. Now, what may have happened today is that the trade was buying beans and then late in the session kind of percolated higher in corn, maybe even buying corn and wheat was just the odd one out, the recipient. I wonder if the traders this morning, wheat looked kind of firm if they weren't, uh, you know, disappointed, it couldn't follow through and were stepping aside before the report. The, 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 the wheat has been so volatile that I don't think a lot of traders like to ride it through the report. It's just been limit moves and, and, you know, big moves. So I'm guessing that's part of it. Um, yet I got to circle back to the, the low crop ratings and, and what impact that might longer term have. The six to 10 day forecast, though, maybe traders looked at that. The six to 10 day does have really that whole panhandle region a little west and north of there with above normal precipitation. And they are really, really in need. Uh, they're not in an extreme that a drought they're an exceptional drought and down in that area so it's it's pretty harsh well as well weekly export sales this morning another uh, week of uh, decent sales corn beans uh, any thoughts with what you saw with the demand picture with the weekly export sales numbers brian the the corn number was i'm going to say solid but it wasn't you know outstanding and i think we're 30.8 million bushels there soybeans again another um Another number that just has real good strength behind it, good merit. Um, really like what I'm seeing on the big picture with soybeans. And that may be given the bean, bean market its boost there. The products seem to be well supported. And as we look um, look down the road toward, um, you know, South America, the crop's pretty well known. So where are they going to come for beans? Um, what's left in Brazil to export, perhaps? A lot of shipments already out. But come back to the U.S. and secure inventory needs, and that's what we're really seeing with, I think the um, the the bean number. Uh, when you look today, all wheat 5.7 million, not too stellar. 8. Point, I think two on the new crop, so a little bit there. So, you know, maybe the trade, you know, by days in was a little bit disappointed in that wheat number, where beans uh, just under 30 million on old, 11 million on new. And then you saw, like I said, corn combined, about 35, 36 million, so solid, but a little disappointing. I thought maybe that old crop numbers will would be higher, and it'll be higher next week because of the big announced sale earlier in the week. Too well, true. as we, yeah, very, very true. Well, as we head into tomorrow's report and look at the grain complex as a whole, any thoughts you have for, for farmers and ranchers as they're looking at things heading into that report tomorrow? I, you know, we've been kind of in this uptrend for a long time. So, so one, don't let it slip through your fingers. Everything looks supportive yet that I can tell. Um, the Ukraine situation hasn't resolved itself. You know, we talked about this week in and week out that, boy, if, if things just could flip over and there's a truce and all efforts are agriculture, not happening. Um, shipments, I, I think what I would encourage your your audience to look for here is is um, a report that probably isn't going to send us a lot one direction. But keep in mind time of year. 
I've kind of made the argument that, you know, things are pretty well supported, but they generally are in bull markets. You've got good news and the markets move higher. So at some point that just doesn't move any chips over. And really the old crop corn has been sort of stagnant now for about six weeks. So with new crop around $7, it might take something a lot more to push the market. So if you haven't started on your sales or you're behind, get started on sales for new crop. Well, Brian, let's shift over to livestock and looking at weekly export sales numbers. Uh, strong number for pork again today. China was in there stepping in. Uh, one has to wonder where they just, was this one of their big specialty purchase weeks or, or what happened there? But uh, futures wise, you know, the hogs ended up fairly mixed. What's your thoughts with the hog market after uh, the export number and then just the way we traded today? I think the hog market the last week was a classic by the by the rumor sell effect because the market moved higher into the hogs and pigs report, got a favorable report, and then posted a big bearish key reversal and had a pretty harsh sell off. Now it's trying to find its footing. Um, it's hard for pork to find a footing when the cattle market's on the decline. The cattle market went on the decline. We think when, well, two things: one, weight gain has been good, but the other thing is that uh, when China went into more heavy lockdowns just the expectation that we're just going to see the export market slow some at a time of the year where the consumer should be picking up beef for grilling, high energy prices, inflation, uh, you know, it's got everybody a little bit unnerved a little bit. Uh, but it looks like the hog market, I don't know, I want to say is well supported on the pullbacks because there's so many disease issues this year. Limited supply, the hogs and pigs report indicated a tighter supply. Uh, kind of hard to be a little, you know, bearish on this. I know 114 June is still a high price, but when you come from close to 120, it's a correction in a market that's ultimately got a real strong undertone to it. How about over in the cattle trade here, Brian? Uh, you know, fairly, I'll call it mixed action today. Uh, mm -hmm. Weaker export sales number. What's your thoughts with what you're seeing? And also, too, we had some early week sales in feedlot country that was a bit surprising. I think what you're, you're you're seeing as a market that's trying to find its place right now. So if you look when the cattle market peaked and then dropped off, basically it came on the heels. One, energy prices were rallying at that time. So that cuts into the pocketbook of consumers, but more importantly, when the lockdown started in China and worries that the slow that you're gonna you're going to see this export market likely slow down. I don't know how much. At least that's what the market seems to be concerned with. Ultimately though, um, I, I got to keep stepping back and looking at the big picture. And there just, to me, has been no incentive the last two to three years to anticipate any significant herd growth to, to keep up with demand once we go post-pandemic. And once the export market clears up, this whole war sort of throw a kink in things. And that's also when we saw the market struggle, um, as the stock market did, as did a lot of other markets. Uh, but the cattle market, I think, is well supported on limited inventory. And looking as well, dairy market here this week, Brian, what's your thoughts with what you're seeing there as we get towards the end of the week? Yeah, still a lot of high volatility. Um, just when it looks like the market may have peaked, then it drops and it comes back. But the, the charts are starting to concern me that we we peaked, let's say, two weeks ago, dropped off pretty hard. Now we're coming back. We've create, we're creating the right shoulder of a head and shoulders formation. So it may not mean anything, but what it does is it probably tells us the the, the, the milk market's going to correct back down into the 20 to 22 dollar level and that's still a high price for milk but when you're trading 24 to near 25 it's certainly worth defending and it, it just looks like the market doesn't have enough uh demand to push it much above the, the 24 dollar mark history told us that we just can't seem to get it done above there so um inclined to be a little bit more defensive posture here the charts are looking a little bit more potentially bearish well, Brian, we packed a lot into a short amount of time uh, here today. Any final thoughts you have for us before we wrap up on this Thursday? Again, as I was kind of mentioning before, uh, on grains, if you're, uh, you've are you been holding out so far, so good, but uh, don't bypass $7 forever. It's still a lot of revenue per acre. Hope your first sales are your worst. I think in soybeans, you want to step that up a little bit too and believe the acres are going to be there. We've been thinking this week that maybe some farmers are going to switch back to corn. That may very well happen. Big discrepancy between bean and corn prices after the report. But talking to a couple of producers, they said, not so fast. When when you you might say that, but when you go to actually find out if you can get fertilizer and at what price, start penciling this, 
that switch may not be quite as evident or easy today. So, um, so beans might have some, you know, 2 million additional acres for, with some certainty behind it, the way the market's trading. Well, I'd say the, since the report, it's come back some, but it's, it's still a high price and a low input market compared to what it takes to produce corn. Well, a lot of great thoughts to consider. And Brian, I know if producers need a little advice, they could reach out to you and the team there at Total Farm Marketing very easily. Go into the website, totalfarmmarketing.com, or giving you guys a phone call, can't they? Yeah, give us a phone call, 800-334-9779. Uh, we love to have just conversation. We can make it quick. Uh, if you do call in, uh, remind me to, um, I can email out something called 12 Option Strategies for an Uncertain World. It's on our website too. It's a free resource. But we get a lot of questions on options and how they work in this environment. If people want to shift risk or look at re-ownership, and that's a great resource. So um, I, I kind of throw that out there as well as sort of an enticer Call in, let's talk about the markets and then uh, uh, see what kind of strategies you want to really, you know, my point is strategize. So what kind of strategies do you want to look at for the year ahead? Expect almost anything. Well, we appreciate the time as always with that. Brian Doherty, Senior Market Advisor with Total Farm Marketing. Thank you, sir. Have a great rest of your week and weekend and we'll talk to you next week. Jesse, thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you and uh, your, uh, your audience and uh, keep everything safe this spring. With that, Brian Doherty from Total Farm Marketing. That's going to do it for Market Talk on this Thursday, April 7th. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.